Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to the Savage uh, Nation Cafe. We're going to have an Obama-Trump-free day. That's the first and last time you're going to hear their names on the show for the next three hours. Uh, free of those names for three straight hours because I frankly have had enough of it. I mean, the election is in a year or more. And the clowns in the media are clamoring to make you think the election is in a day or more. I'm not going to do this for a year or more because I have more on my mind than Obama and Trump. Or Sanders or Hillary. I don't give a damn. How's that? I am sick of it. My mind has more interesting things to think about. And so that's what I want to talk about. So before we get into what I really am going to talk about... I'm going to read you the headlines of the stories that I pulled and that my crew pulled that I was going to talk about till I fell asleep eating leftover Chinese food from last night. I fell asleep because I can't do politics every day. I did it already this week. I did my dose of politics. So here are the stories I would have talked about if I were an ordinary talk show host who didn't have a creative mind. And then after I read you the headlines of the stories I would have talked about, if I were an ordinary talk show host who didn't have a creative mind, I'm going to show you what my creative mind wants to talk about. So here are the stories I'm not going to talk about. One, from Newsmax, beyond belief, Obama moves to close last U.S. uranium plant. I mean, that says it all. If he's not the enemy within, would you please name the person who's the enemy within? Can someone please name a bigger enemy within than, oh, wait, I mentioned his name again. Oh, well, I can't help it, I guess. Beyond belief, Obama moves to close last U.S. uranium plant. Story two. Putin warns Israel off targeting Iranian targets in Syria. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Little old Israel's now trying to start a little trouble with old Russia. How's that going to work out? Who knows? Who knows? Maybe Israel wants to play the David and Goliath story all over again. Only this time it's not the Bible. It's not a fantasy being written by men who are low on vitamin B3. Story number three, birth tourism booms in California despite federal crackdown. Birth tourism in Berkeley? Yes, that's right. On a regular home in a residential street in North San Jose, it is a birthing hotel. It cater caters mainly to Chinese women who come to the United States to grab that prize. Instant U.S. citizenship for their little babies. And then they have an anchor baby. And in case you don't know it, the number one immigrant group in America in 2065 will be not from Mexico, but from China. Birth tourism booms in California, Jerry, despite feral crackdown. And so far as I know, Jerry, they all, they all don't come here to work. For those of you who are Muslim apologists, here's another story for you. Muslim father kills daughter caught shoplifting condoms. Well, we know it's the religion of pieces. A Muslim father has admitted to strangling his 19-year-old daughter to death after she was caught shoplifting condoms to use with a man she had been forbidden from dating. Asadullah Halal Manala Manala Khan used his bare hands to strangle his daughter Lari because she had brought dishonor to the family. The court in Germany heard. Well, okay. Another, another story. Here's another one I'm not going to talk about. Oscar nominee subjects are going to be a heavy dose of lesbians transgenders and pedophile priests oh god and i thought i already had no reason to go to the movies so the oscars are now devolving further and further down into the toilet bowl the 13 things muslims will ban first once they replace american culture according to buzzpo.com a radical imam in england has released a list of the 13 things muslims will ban if and when they suddenly and successfully replace American culture with Sharia law. They'll ban alcohol, pork, gambling, porn, usury, promiscuity, free mixing, gays, cinemas, idolatry, insurance, stocks, and insulting the prophets. Well, that's a small list. That's a heck of a small punch list. You know what I say, Ahmed? Why don't you try it in America? Because we're armed to the teeth. We're not in England. Go ahead and make our day, Ahmed. 
Next story. Uh, absolutely possible, says John Kerry, that the U.S. and Russia will fight against ISIS, okay? The last time I believe John Kerry was like, never. And finally, it's the story I told you about yesterday. Obama has turned Putin into the world's most powerful leader, and Obama's being laughed at behind his back for the reasons we've told you about for the last six and a half years or seven years, whatever the, the term of this regime has been. Six years now, six and a half, I can't even count. It's been a reign of terror. That completes the news portion of the Savage Nation. Now, if I were an ordinary talk show host, there's three, six, nine good hours of shows there. In fact, an ordinary talk show host can take any one of those stories and, why, oh, I really don't believe that. Now, do you believe it, Mary? You're from Washington. You actually say you believe that? No, no, that's not true. No, 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 I know the best. I know exactly right. No, you're wrong. I'm right. I'm so smart. But since I'm not going to do that, I'll tell you what I am going to do to show you how my mind thinks. Number one, how do you fight depression without meds? What did he say? Why is Savage doing that? Because I am totally against drugs. And I'm telling you that the human condition is such that human beings have had depression. Well, it's like saying global warming started when industrialization started, when, he, when we know that's a fantasy. That's like saying depression began when the drugs were made to fight depression. Or let's say when Sigmund Freud came along to analyze depression. No, depression has been with man since the first caveman got bored in the cave. And he had nothing to do and he started to put chalk drawings on the wall of like a reindeer and a, a bison. He was bored to death with his wife and children. And in between the hunts, he started to, to draw on the wall of his cave. So how do you fight depression <laughs> without medication? I have my tricks. I've been a lifetime fighter of depression. I realized only in the last, well, it's quite a while now. I didn't admit it to myself, but I've been fighting depression most of my life. Now, I have my reasons. I'm not going to, since I'm not Glenn Beck, I'm not going to sit and tell you why. I'm not going to complain or cry about what happened in my childhood, but things happen. And it was pretty bad. Nothing bad compared to what goes on in, let's say, in, in Syria to a Christian family where the daughter is taken out and raped by the Muslims or sent around to a whorehouse to be used by vermin in, in ISIS while Obama does nothing except talk about fake rape on college campuses. So things happen in people's lives which make them kind of down or sad, and they have to overcome it. And I have found... A lot of things that worked for me, and I'm going to talk about that, and mainly exercise. I'll tell you now, right now, I could trigger a depressive episode of myself with the wrong diet. I can trigger a depressive episode of myself by so many different means. Also, I can fight them by many means. And I've written books on nutrition over the years, and I've studied under the master's hands who know an awful lot about it. There are nutrients that will reverse depression in minutes because the nutrients cross the blood-brain barrier as fast as you can imagine. And a lot of our depression is chemical, as you well know. And the worst thing you can do is feed your depression the wrong chemicals. So how do you, the listener of the Savage Nation, fight depression without medication? Here's another little question, a shorty. An easy question to answer. Is God real? How do you know it's God's? How do you know God's real? What's the proof that God's real? Now, I mean, I could sing a song every time I see a leaf or touch the sky or hear a baby cry. Oh God, I know God is real or whatever. I mean, I can sing this, this Frankie Lane song every time I hear a newborn baby cry or touch a leaf or see the sky. I know, you know, what I'm saying. But how do you know God is real? How do you know God exists? What you looked at the at the blood moon and you saw God. Three, what is romantic love? Is it real? I mean, we've been told that love is the greatest thing and the greatest emotion a man can feel. But I believe that romantic love is self-delusion. I believe that people delude themselves to think that they're in love. Now, I shouldn't say it because there are a lot of 20-somethings who are about to get married, including one of them who works for me. And I don't want to poison uh, John this him. He's smiling now on the Skype screen. Went to a rehearsal yesterday for the wedding. So don't... Don't take the <laughs> don't take don't take the cynical worldview to heart, Robert. Please, you're young, you're in love. Stick with it. Don't don't listen to this grizzled old man who's asking this question. But I'm asking my larger audience of any age. Israel, first of all, in an age that we live in, how can there be romantic love? I'm serious about that. With internet pornography, can you ever love anybody again? Everything is now crazy and distorted and perverted. But let's put that aside. What is romantic love, and is it real or is it self-delusion? 
And finally now, if that's not enough for you of lifestyle questions, because we're trying to have an Obama-Trump-free day, uh, what is the biggest mistake you've ever made in your life that you regret that you wish you could undo? That's a slight, that's a small question, Robert, isn't it? I mean, you know, if I was an average guy listening to this show or a woman listening or driving around in the country, are you telling me there's not a, per a person in this country who doesn't want to answer that question in their own head? How do you fight depression without meds? Is God real? How do you know? What is romantic love? Is it real or self-delusion? What is the biggest mistake you've ever made in your life that you regret that you wish you could undo? Now, if that's not enough for you, you're brain dead. Then you're ready for another Steven Spielberg fantasy. Uh, the man who tried to remake Hillary Clinton's image and failed, apparently, because her image is so, well, let us say, uh, impossible to change that even she rejected Spielberg's advice. She's so frozen in hatred that nobody could ever change her persona. You talk about Planned Parenthood, how about Planned Hillaryhood? This is the Savage Nation, the phone number is 855-400-7282. Let's start right at the top. Let's see, Toll Doctor. All right, let's try Patty on WABC. Patty, what's your topic? With all of that I threw out there, with the smorgasbord of the mind that I just put out there, what are you calling about? Oh, wonderful, the uh, topic of fighting depression without antidepressants. Uh, I am a recovering alcoholic. Um, I almost died from drinking and booze. Uh, I pretty much didn't get sober till I was 50 years old. And when I got out of the fast little detox, um, they wanted to put me on antidepressants to stay sober. And I said, listen, I've been involved with drugs. I've been an addict my whole life. In other one words, they took you off one drug, alcohol, and wanted to hook you on another one that had a nice high price tag to it, something you couldn't even buy in a liquor store. Exactly. So I told this doctor, I said, no way. I said, it just cost me. I mean, I was told I had 90 days to live. And, you know, through the grace of God and AA, I managed to get, I have 15 years behind me, which is a miracle. I have a lot of, I have a lot of former and current depressives who listen to me, by the way. Do you know that? But, and Michael, is, the, is it depression or is it living life on life's terms? You know what well, I mean? Come well, on. let me think about, I don't want to just give you a glib answer. No, there is real depression because there are people who can be in relatively good places and good situations and still be depressed. Negaholic. Because not... because they're because they're stuck in their own their own mind. Their own mind has taken them into that into that swamp. They can't get out of it. What about negativity? Isn't that a form of depression? No, I think negativity can lead us to the truth. I, I don't think the way average Americans do. A lot of Americans grew up on the power of positive thinking, but I think po positive thinking is overrated. That's that's a thing of the fifties. It's a, like a Norman Vincent Peale thing that if you think positively, good things will happen. Try that in the concentration camp. Oh, I know. I understand. Uh, uh, try try the power of positive thinking when you're on the shell fire in in a, in a foxhole in a war zone. See if that works. Oh, I I, I know what you. Mean. So in other words, I'm I'm sort of a realist. I have a more, I would say, I would like to use the word Slavic sense of, sense of uh, the world. I have a far more cynical view of the world than the average American. The average American lives in a dream world, and I, I don't live in that dream world. And I'm not saying, unfortunately, I mean, I'll take my depression and my sense of reality over a lack, uh, uh, than, let's say, a vision of everything's perfect and a not, not an, even a knowledge of what's going on in the real world. So I, I don't, I'm not complaining about it. I think that a person is, by nature, not a happy person. Where, where is it said that we're supposed to be happy every day? I mean, happiness is something great for children. Do you know adults who walk around who are happy all the time, other than idiot housewives in Marin County who are on medication or, or let's say, smoking pot all day or drinking, uh, drinking wine and burning fireplaces? I, I agree with you, but just in terms of living, you know, when I was drinking and drugging and I did every, I was a garbage head. I was a total garbage head. But all, right, all right, so wait, wait, okay, hold on, stop, stop, stop. So did you get over your depression? What did you use? What I used was a lot of Eastern, like Chinese herbs. I, I went completely vitamins, herbs. And yeah, right. So uh, which vitamin? Did you find Dr. Hoffer's prescriptions for a massive doses of niacin, for example, to fight depression and schizophrenia? I did. and I All right, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave because I'm going to get into more of this. And I thank you for that first call. I got callers now on romantic love. 